Let's continue on with some of the, the book homework problems. Uh, I like 67. It's the only example of this particular type of problem in which we have both aqueous solutions and gases in an equilibrium type problem. Um, in every other example I have, I can't recall another problem that's actually done this. And normally I, I got some issues with it, but as long as we understand that's what we're dealing with for our answers, uh, that's fine. We'll, we'll just deal. Uh, what is the EMF, the E, uh, cell potential, of this cell under standard conditions? All right, so we have to take a look as far as who we're dealing with. Iron is going from a 2 to a 3, so it's losing an electron. And oxygen is going from a 0 to a 2 minus. It's gaining electrons. That's what's going on. Uh, so we'll write out these little cell potentials, 2, as far as what's actually... Um, reductions. So this may not make sense as far as what the equation looks like, but we always write these up in regards to reduction potentials that you're going to find in the book, or any resource for that matter. 0 0.771, it's positive. And then I can take a look for oxygen. And just to make this go, it's always listed as regards to um, in a acidic solution. It'll come. Give me a second. And it forms water. And its cell potential is positive 1.23. And uh, based upon how this reaction is actually going, who's gaining and who's losing, uh, this is going to be losing an electron, which is oxidation. So that'll take place at the anode. And this would therefore be taking place in the cathode. So if I want to get the cell potential for this, it's going to be the positive. And again, if it's spontaneous, it always needs to be the more positive value first. Otherwise, it's going to be negative, and that's not spontaneous. So 1.23 minus 0 0.771 is equal to positive 0. 459 volts. There it is. That's the write up for it. Okay, let's take a look at part B. Uh, what is the EMF of the cell when you have some other conditions for these guys? Uh, well, for this particular problem, and this is the whole idea, is to take a look at this under non standard conditions in which we're using the Nernst equation. So we are going to bring in the information we had previously. So E standard is 0.459 volts minus, this is a standard value, which we derived earlier. As far as the electrons that are changing place, it's going to be 4. And then the log of the Q values that we have here we have uh, the iron solution, so again, putting on the stuff that's on top, raised to their exponential or coefficient values, 0 0.01 raised to the fourth, 1.3 raised to the fourth. I'm just grabbing these out of the concentrations and the pressures that are given to us. Here's the weird one. This is an ATMs, so pressures, we really don't normally do this. Uh, but again, we're just kind of going with it. 3.16 times 10 to the negative 4 raised to the fourth. And if we go ahead and plug all this math through, uh, I'll just go ahead and get to the punchline. It is equal to positive 0 0.37 volts. There you have it. That is doing all this math in here. You probably want to step your way through that. Uh, let's go back to some notes. All right, this is a, a fun little problem about corrosion. Uh, for this, we will state that oxygen is a good, wait for it, oxidizing agent.
that kind of makes sense. It's like, huh. Uh, in the equation which we just used in the previous problem, in which we look at what's going on here, And again, its cell potential is positive 1.23. So again, in regards to being reduction potential, this would be rather high on the list. Uh, and being on the list, it is a high reduction potential, therefore acts well as an oxidizing agent. There you have it. Okay, we're, we're not done here. Um, we'll just list it as a little bit more information. This is why iron rust. Its uh, cell potential for reduction is negative 0 0.49 volts and easily oxidizes. So when you're putting it into an equation, remember the more positive value comes first in a spontaneous reaction. So you have this positive value minus a negative value. You get a very positive result, meaning it's spontaneous. It happens, which is why solid metallic iron with a value, oxidation value of zero, it goes through this process very, very well as far as um, losing electrons. Okay. Now, this also helps us understand, explain, um, something called a sacrificial anode. This is pretty cool. A uh, sacrificial anode helps us understand why uh, battleships that are made of iron, why don't they just corrode and rust away? Because, of course, oxygen is present in the water, it's in the air. Uh, metal, we know, does uh, corrode iron. Uh, same thing if you put a metal pipe in the ground. If you're just a little metal pipe in the ground, you find it years later, it's all rusted. How do you prevent that from rusting when you have uh, very important iron pipes in the ground and you don't want them to corrode? You have to uh, attach it, connect it to something else that will corrode instead. And many times you use something like magnesium. Dogs are barking. Sorry. Uh, Magnesium plus two electrons will turn into magnesium metal, and that has a reduction potential of negative 2.37, which is even larger than what we had for iron. So when the two metals are present and oxygen is going to react with one of them, oxygen is going to be gaining electrons, and one of these two is going to be losing electrons, Magnesium by far steps forward, if you will, and acts as the metal that will be reduced, um, or excuse me, will be oxidized, losing its electrons. Uh, it is going to be losing electrons as opposed to iron losing electrons. So it's kind of interesting. The only thing you have to be careful of is you have to make sure you have enough magnesium, because as soon as the magnesium is fully depleted and gone, uh, the reaction will continue, but this time it will happen with the iron. So you have to make sure you continuously replace uh, the magnesium so that you are always getting the magnesium and not the iron you want to keep. All right, new conversation. We are now going to be looking at electrolysis. Now, electrolysis is pushing a reaction that is not spontaneous. So we'll actually state that out here. Supplying electricity to push a non-spontaneous reaction. Um, based on what we have talked about before, the change, or excuse me, the charge, that still looks pretty close, 
the charge is measured in coulombs. And just to throw it in, that's something that we talked about before, roughly 65, 485, I'm sorry, 96, 485 coulombs per mole. And some more information we'll throw in here is, that's going to be important is if we're going to be pushing this reaction through, we're going to introduce another unit, which is the amperes. Sometimes it's called amps. And what this does, um, it measures the, the rate in which the charge is being distributed. So ampere, it measures, I'm going to change this, measured. Um, I change it still. I don't like the way that sounds. Measures coulombs per second. Or another way of saying it's based on how these this charge is being distributed in time, current, which is most commonly how we refer to it. So amps is coulombs per seconds. Uh, another way we can look at this equation is C is equal to A times seconds. So I just kind of rearranged what we had written here uh, just to kind of put the, in another way we can think of it. Uh, now, if you look in your um, packet of information, they'll assign different letters to symbolize the charge, the amps, and the seconds. Uh, charge is sometimes listed here as Q. Amps, for some unknown reason, is listed as I, and seconds is listed as time. Um, again, no good reason for this, but this is kind of how it's set up. All right, we're going to do a problem here in just a moment, but I'll go ahead and pause and we'll start on a new lecture.